In this video, we're going to review specific immunity and T cell activation. To begin, let's review specific immunity. Specific immunity refers to the type of immunity which mounts antigen-specific defense mechanisms. The specific response can take several days to become protective. Specific immunity develops throughout one's lifetime and involves B cells and T cells. In this video, we will review the two types of T cells, T helper and T cytotoxic cells. Each type of T cell plays a unique role in the immune response and can be distinguished from the other by their surface markers. All T cells have two distinct proteins on their surfaces. The first one is the TCR, the T cell receptor, and is the antigen receptor. Each T cell has a unique TCR. The second protein is a cluster of differentiation marker known as a CD marker. The T cytotoxic cells have a CD8 marker and T helper cells have a CD4 marker. Both surface markers are essential for the activation of T cells. As we just saw, T cells have TCRs on their surface, each recognizing a unique antigen. Therefore, let's talk about antigens. There are two types of antigens, intracellular and extracellular antigen. Intracellular or endogenous antigens, such as a virus, are from a cancer cell are recognized by the cytotoxic T cells. T helper cells will recognize an epitope from an extracellular or exogenous antigen, such as the typical bacterial or protozoal infection. The second surface markers on the T cell was the CD marker. The CD markers on T cells are used to recognize MHC proteins on host cells. MHC molecules are self proteins and are used by APCs, antigen presenting cells, to present antigens to the T cells. There are two classes of MHC molecules, MHC class 1 and class 2. MHC class 1 are expressed on nucleated cells and are used to present intracellular antigens to cytotoxic cells. MHC class 2 are expressed on macrophages, dendrites, and B cells and are used to present extracellular antigens to helper T cells. So let's take a second to review. We have two types of T cells, T helper and T cytotoxic. We have two types of antigens, extracellular and intracellular. And we have two types of MHC molecules, MHC class 1 and class 2. So how do they fit together? T helper cells recognize extracellular antigens being presented with an MHC class II molecule, whereas T cytotoxic cells recognize intracellular antigens presented with an MHC class I molecule. So now let's put it all together and let's first talk about T helper cell activation. T helper cells are used for extracellular antigens. To be activated, they must interact with an antigen presenting cell presenting antigen pieces with an MHC class II molecule. The helper T cell uses its TCR and the CD4 marker to recognize the antigen and M MHC on the APC. T helper cells recognize require a second signal to be activated as well. The CD28 marker on a T cell must recognize the CD80 on the APC. Once both signals or both recognitions are achieved, the T cell can become active. An active T cell is now able to bind to interleukin. Interleukin causes the T cell to proliferate and differentiate. The T cell differentiates into memory T cells and effector T cells. The memory cells go to the secondary lymphoid tissue to help with future infections. The effector T cells, there are two, T helper 1 and T helper 2. The T helper 2 cells are used to activate B cells in the humoral response. This will be covered in another video. Whereas T helper 1 cells 
increase the activity of other cells such as macrophages and help to activate T cytotoxic cells. So let's talk about T cytotoxic cell activation. Cytotoxic cells are used for intracellular antigens. To be activated, they must interact with an antigen presenting cell using an MHC class 1 molecule to hold its piece of antigen. The cytotoxic T cell uses its TCR and CD8 marker to recognize the antigen in MHC on the APC. The binding of the APC to the cytotoxic T cell initiates the cytotoxic T cell to display interleukin receptors. The T cytotoxic cell can now be stimulated by interleukin 2, which was released by T helper 1 cells. Interleukin 2 will stimulate the cytotoxic T cell to undergo clonal expansion producing both memory cells and active cytotoxic T cells. The memory T cells will go to the secondary lymphoid tissue for subsequent infection. The active T cell will be used to kill infected cells. Let's review the killing mechanisms of active cytotoxic T cells. The active cytotoxic T cell will come in contact with an infected cell at the site of infection. The cytotoxic T cell knows which cells are infected because the infected cells present antigen on their surface using an MHC class 1. Once the cytotoxic T cell finds the infected, T the infected cell, it will bind to it. Through exocytosis, the cytotoxic T cell releases perforin and granzymes. Perforin are proteins used to poke a hole in the infected cell and granzymes are degradation enzymes which break down any antigen pieces and cellular debris. The release of perforin and granzymes initiates cell death in the infected cell. The death of the infected cell is a controlled death, so it doesn't lead to an infection of the surrounding cells. So in summary, T helper cells are used in extracellular antigenic responses and require antigen to be presented with MHC class II molecules. T cytotoxic cells are used in intracellular invasions and are activated by APCs presenting the antigen using the MHC class I molecule.